Hello! Today I'm very excited to bring you this 1 12th scale sofa tutorial and this sofa is for my doll's house study and you'll see as we go through the tutorial that this has been very much a learning process for me. I've never made a sofa like this before so I really have been figuring it out as we go along as you'll see throughout the tutorial and you'll also notice that I've done the piping in a really unconventional way. I'm not a very good stitcher so I wanted to find a way of doing piping without any sewing. So I've come up with this method which you might find is a bit strange but I think it's worked and I really hope that if you also struggle with stitching that you'll find this way quite easy. So for the fabric I used this lovely just cotton fabric and in the end I bought two fat quarters of this so a quarter is 50 centimetres square and that's half a metre square and by fat quarter it means that she'll cut more than that rather than less and this is what I've ended up with so this large piece and then lots of just little scraps left really and I think it's always good to get a little bit more than you need I did make a few mistakes as well and those pieces I've discarded so I would have had a little bit more than this left but like I say it's always better to have too much rather than not enough and as miniaturist you'll, you'll always find a use for pieces of fabric and you could even make a couple of coordinating cushions for this sofa and I'm going to use this on the bench seat in the study to coordinate with this and then I use this 12 millimeter foam that's half an inch foam nice um, soft upholstery foam and I talk about this later on but I think I could have done the seats with a thinner foam so even six or nine millimeter foam could have been used for the seat so if you've got something thinner you can use that and then finally the bunker so this is just sort of like a trimming and it's just like a, a a very sort of fine rope and I ordered this pack which was six meters and I've probably got just under a meter left now again I did make a few mistakes and I discarded those pieces but I think again it's always handy to have a little bit of bunker in stock anyway so if you went for the six meters you'd be sure that you'd have enough for this project and then you've got a little bit left over for other projects and I'll be using this around some of my cushions as well to really coordinate with the sofa and the fabric and the bunker I got from little trimmings just put little trimmings into Google and you'll find the website lovely lady there called Christine and she ships worldwide and the foam I think I talk about this later on in the video but I did have this for sale in my shop at one point but I'm trying to find a new supplier but in the meantime you can just find that on eBay so just search for upholstery foam okay let's get started we're going to begin by constructing the sofa sides and I've made one here just to show you what that will look like. Okay so let's begin construction. So we've got here the two pieces that I'm calling the sides, the bigger pieces, the top and bottom and then the front and back. So we're going to take one of the sides and apply glue along the short edge. and then we're going to attach the front piece. Make sure you've got a flush edge along the front and back like that. Press those together. I'm going to take the top piece and apply glue to a short and a long edge. And then that will sit inside the join pieces and right to the top of the wood. So get it lined up with that side piece first and then pull in the front piece there and I'm just going to grab my piece of strip wood again and I'm going to press that along there to 
make sure I've got a nice flush edge. Make sure it's pushed right into that corner as well. Oops, that sort of front piece popped forward then, so that might be a little bit too long. I can just trim a little bit of that off with my craft knife. Like that. Make sure your strip doesn't stick to the piece. We're then going to attach the other piece at this end. Piece into place as well. I'm just going to remove that glue that's seeping out there and then I'll use my piece of strip wood again just to make sure I've got a nice straight edge along there. Push that there and then you can push the piece against it. Like that. And then we're going to put this piece into place now which will sit on there. So begin by applying glue along those long edges of the top and bottom pieces like that and then apply a little bit along the short edge of the side and just laying that into place on top make sure you're not pushing in those narrow pieces pressing it all together and then we can apply glue to this final end Lay it back down and attach the front piece. Carefully press it all together and we're going to leave this piece to dry off for a while and then when it's completely dried we can sand it on all sides just to make sure we've got a nice flush piece like that. So I'm going to pop that to one side. Whilst that's drying bring in your piece of dowel and again, I've advised using balsa wood for this, just because it's so much easier to sand than the birch dowel that, has, that I supply in the other sizes. And what we want to do is create a flatter edge along what will become the bottom, so that that can then be attached to our side piece. So just hold it onto your sandpaper and make sure you're not sort of rolling it about as you're sanding. So you really want to keep it in that position and then sand. I'm pressing quite hard because that helps keep it in that position. And then have a look. And already you can see I'm just getting a bit of a flatter edge along there. And I think I'm just going to go a little bit more. So make sure you put it back down in that same position. Sand a little bit more off. It's taken about half a millimetre off the diameter of the dowel. So that's what you want to aim for. And obviously you want the same on both of them so that the arms are at the same height. So that can be put to one side for a moment. And then when that side piece has completely dried, we'll give it a good sand and then we can attach our dowel. So whilst that side piece is drying, we're going to construct the base. We've got these little um, strengthening things to go inside. I'm just doing that with this piece because this is so much wider. So it's going to need a little bit of support on the inside. So we're just going to make some lines on one of the larger pieces, so the, what will become the bottom piece here. And we're going to do one in the centre. So just do a little pencil mark in the centre of the piece like that and at the other side of the wood as well and then join that up and then we're going to do one in the center of each half and because it's half a millimeter it doesn't have to be exact but just roughly in the center of that first half and the same in the second half as well, just so that our support strips are placed evenly on the inside there. Join those up and then apply glue along the edge of that first piece. I'm going to attach the side 
Again, make sure you've got a nice flush line along the front and back. Press that together and then we're going to put these support strips in. So these are the ones that you've got three of and they're shorter than the side pieces. So I'm just going to sand the ends off. I forgot to do that on those for some reason. Okay, so just apply glue along one long edge. And then just pop that down so it's sitting over that line. And you, again, you want to make sure that you've got a flush edge along the front and back, otherwise our front and back pieces won't go on straight. So, And what you can do is you can use that as you go along to make sure that you've got a flush edge along the back there. And the next piece... Okay, make sure you're keeping a straight line along that back edge. And the final piece. Okay, we're now going to turn that and apply glue along these sides. like that. Make sure you've got a flush edge along there and you will have a bit of an overhang here because that's where our other side piece will go. So press that into place. We're now going to attach the top piece and that will sit in there like that. So apply glue First of all, along the top of the supports. Just straighten that one up a little bit. And then apply it along a short and long edge of this piece. Pop that into place like that. So it's sitting on top of the supports, going right into the corner there, push it against that side piece, pull the back piece in to meet it as well. And we'll pop a bit of masking tape on this once we've put it all together, just to hold it all securely. Press it into place for now. We're now going to attach the end piece. So again, apply glue down those long edges. And then a little bit on one short end of the remaining side piece. And then pop that side bit into place first and then push it all together. I've got a little bit of an overhang at that end but again what we can do once this is dried is we'll sand it all to make a nice square piece. Push both pieces against the supports and then we can attach the front piece. So again apply glue along all of these front edges. and then lay the front piece across there. Push the top piece in. And just use your fingers to make sure that you've got a nice flush edge around here. Like that. And I'm going to grab a little bit of masking tape. Just want to stick some pieces right over the top like that. And a piece at the other end. And I'm going to put a piece at each end as well. So put in a piece right over the top like that. That end as well. Sorry, that's going off camera again. 
pull that all in like that and again that piece can be left to dry and then when it's dry we'll sand it all off to make a nice square flush piece. The side part is now dry so I'm going to sand it on all edges so just hold it against your sandpaper and work it in small circular motions and do that on each side put that to one side we're now going to attach the arm we don't want to sit it just directly on top if you can see with this one I've just positioned it over to one side that's because we want a straight edge on what will become the inside edge of the sofa. So have a piece of um, sheet wood handy and we'll use that to line it up. So apply glue to that edge that you flattened off. And then just sit it on top. And then bring in your piece of spare wood and you can press it down and that's just because we want the rolled arm to be on the outside edge of the sofa. So we'll press it into place and again that piece can be left to dry. Once the glue has dried on the base do the same thing again, sand it on all edges to get a nice flush piece. So we're going to start the upholstery now and we're going to start with the arms and I've just done this one as my practice piece and this took quite a while because every time I realised that I'd made a mistake I went back and amended it until I got it to this and I still can see what I should have done differently at the back. I didn't want to use the sort of bunker at the back because there's no need because it won't be visible but I should have put a piece of fabric around the inside edge, but we'll come to that. So that was the only thing that I'll change when I redo it now. And again, it's something that won't be seen, so it won't matter too much. But the rest of it I'm really pleased with. I think that looks nice and tidy. This bit down here is obviously going to be below the base, so that won't be seen. And once we've put the whole sofa together, we'll put a panel over the whole bottom piece, a panel of fabric, to cover up any bare wood underneath. Okay so let's get started on the other arm. So bring it in and the first thing we're going to do is make a template of the front and back of the arm. So we want two pieces like this. So take a piece of card and I'm using this blue because it's similar colour to my fabric so if you're using a pale fabric then use a pale piece of card. You want to get it so this straight inside edge is on a straight edge of your card and then you can draw around it. And then cut that piece out. And you just want that straight edge again on what will be the inside edge. So we have got that dip there. You don't have to bother about that, just go straight down. And then you can use that piece to create a second arm template. Cut that one out as well. And then try them against the front of the piece just to make sure there's no small adjustments you need to make. Hold it in place. So I just want to snip a tiny little strip off the bottom there. So that is going to be the front, so that will be my back strip. So I'm just going to put a B on there and then check the front one. And I did this when I was making the first one. I did two the same direction, so I had to start again. And that one needs a little bit extra trimming, so a little bit off the bottom there. So that's going to be my front piece. 
right on the back of the front piece. Okay, so I've written the F and B on the back of each piece. So we now want to apply some double sided tape to the front of each of those pieces. So lay the piece on along a straight edge. And then cut round it. And after doing this, you'll probably need to give your scissor blades a clean, just with a bit of washing up liquid. The same with the other one. Now bring in your wadding. I'm going to remove the double sided tape back in. stick those onto the wadding like that. That one as well. And then cut around those as well. Go back to my bigger scissors, I think they're sharper. So we now want to cut a piece of fabric slightly larger than each of those pieces. So you probably want to leave a border of about, is that about 15 millimetres, maybe 5 eighths of an inch? And cut a second piece to that size. Take a bit of glue, and I'm just using my um, Gorilla Wood glue, as normal. Apply it to one end of your arm piece, or side piece. And then glue on the piece of card. Make sure it's sitting evenly so all of the wood is covered. Put that down. A piece at the other end. Press those into place. Now apply glue around the edges onto the wood. I probably want to go back again about 15 millimetres to cover the border that we left around the fabric. And it around that arm as well. And make sure your fingers are clear of glue before you touch your fabric, and that's one thing that I'm quite bad at. Normally when I'm using fabric and glue, I end up getting glue everywhere and the fabric gets marked. And this time I'm being extra careful. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> what did I just say? Right. Lay the fabric over the front like that. And then we're just going to press it into place. So start probably along the sides. shape it around the dowel, sort of tucking and pleating, keeping that front edge as neat as you can. And when I first done my practice piece, I cut the little slits in the fabric, cut some sort of little triangles out 
which you know you would normally do when you're wrapping fabric around something but I just found that you could always see part of the cut fabric from the front edge and I don't like that so I wanted to keep the piece whole and just shape it around like this and that seems to work I'm going to sort of keep pulling and pressing and the only place we have a little bit of a problem is in this little tuck or in the little corner but just sort of get it as neat as you can and if you have a look on my practice piece you'll see that once the bunker is in place that's sort of hardly noticeable just that little I don't know, little tuck in that corner that's what we're sort of aiming for if you need to sort of put more glue under these little folds at the top then you can do that Make sure they're sitting down flat. Put a little bit more in there as well. The bit you're sort of looking to keep nice and neat is this, just this front section, because all of these sides and around there is going to be covered. And then when you're happy with that, we're going to snip up from the bottom of the fabric to the corner the wood like that and then trim these side bits you only need about a quarter of an inch overlapping the wood and the same at the other side as well and then we're going to stick those down onto the bottom to that flap of fabric and press that down too. So the way I've tried to do it is that all of our little folds and tucks and everything and snips are all going to be hidden. So keep checking that you're happy with that front edge. I'm just seeing if I need to put any extra glue under those flaps. I don't really want to, but I will if I need to. But they seem to be laying quite nicely. So that's what it should look like so far. And we're now going to do that same thing again on the back. So I'll just get a little bit more glue. And then apply glue again around the arm. And I think you'll find this as well, but once you've done this once, when you do your second arm, it's just so much easier. And that's how I feel now I've done that practice run. This all seems very straightforward, but as I was going along, I had to keep thinking at each stage, what have I got to do next, and is that going to cover that? So much more enjoyable this time round. Again, putting my thumb in the glue. It's strange, because I'm quite a neat person. In general, I like to be quite neat and tidy. But just something happens to me when I'm using glue. <laughs> I just turn really clumsy. Okay, so bring in your fabric again, lengthways. Oops. Pull it around at the sides first. in the fabric around the dowel, sort of pleat and tuck at the same time, a bit of 
probably one of the fabric then. I mean, it can't be helped when you're working with glue and fabric. You'll find you are going to get little bits of glue onto the fabric, but if you wipe it off straight away, you should be okay. It's just one of those things that really bugs me when you make something really lovely using fabric and then you come to finish it and you realise you've got a big glue smear somewhere. It might just be me. You're probably lovely and neat and tidy with glue. I'm just going to tuck a little bit of glue under that pleat there. And it's really just to get it to lay flat rather than make it look neat. We just want it to be as flat back to the dowel as we can. And think about that little corner as well. I don't think that looks too bad at all. Just having that little, I don't know what to call it, little rucker. Rucker fabric. Ruckered fabric. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying really. I'm just so excited to get this particular project done because I wanted to make a sofa for such a long time. But as I was sort of doing my practice piece, I was literally shaking, hurrying to sort of get it done and excited to see what it was going to look like. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. This is the back arm, the back of the arm as well, so not as important as the front. And again, cut up to the wood, snip up the corner and then trim the flaps. Same on the other side. Glue those down. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about cushions. Which cushions I'm going to have on there, crocheted throw. actually thought about colours for my crocheted throw. I'll have to get the colour chart out I think. Whether to go predominantly cream or maybe a paler blue or something. Okay so stick that down as well. So we've now got something that looks like that. Glue will still be tacky for a little while, so you can keep going around and pressing and pushing and smoothing. <laughs> Quite pleased with that. That certainly went better that time than the little practice run that I did. In fact, I had to take one end off because it didn't look right at all. I'm quite pleased with that. So that can just be popped to one side and we'll leave that to dry for a moment. So now bring in your bunker. And this is a lovely soft cord. Or like a really soft sort of rope. And this is one millimetre thick. And I got a sort of six metre length. So I thought I can use that for cushions and other things then. And you want to cut a piece about 165 millimetres or six and a half inches, and that's a lot longer than we need. We're going to fold this into a piece of fabric and then that's going to go around the front edge. But we'll come on to that. So, And then you want to cut a piece of fabric to the same length. Now, I just realised I've got a, a crease in that piece, so I'm going to cut another piece. And that was just lazy of me, really, because I've got the iron, an ironing board set up in the kitchen, so I could have gone and ironed it. Right, so we're going to wrap the bunker into one of these pieces. So, actually, you can lay it, lay it down the centre like that, and then apply glue along one edge of the fabric alongside it. Now 
play that down the middle and I'm going to fold that over fold in the bunker in So glue the fabric down on either side and then you want the bunker to be sitting right in the join there. So sort of press it forward into the core into the sort of crease with your nail. one side to dry as well and then we're just going to fold this piece so just apply glue along one long edge and then fold that in half and glue it down so this piece I don't think I said was as long obviously as the bunker but then about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch wide Whilst those pieces are drying, we're going to put a bit of wadding around the round part of the arm, so around the dowel. So cut a piece of double-sided tape to length, and you want it to be probably a couple of millimetres each end shorter than the arm. Just check that. Oops. So that's probably about three millimetres shorter, three millimetres at either end, and then cut that in half. And then you want to stick, realising I'm in your way there, you want to stick a piece at each sort of edge of each arm. That's making sure you've got that even bit left at each end. Like that. And the reason I'm not using glue with this wadding is that once the glue gets onto the wadding it dries hard, hard and crispy and that sort of pokes through the fabric. So that's why I'm using the tape. And then cut a piece of wadding. And again you want that to be a little bit shorter at each end, trim a little bit more off there, and then you want it to fit basically from one piece of double sided tape around to the other without pulling it too tight. So trim off along there, Just remove the back in on one side. into place. The other side. And then wrap it round and stick it down. And that's one of the mistakes I made on the other side. I put it sort of all the way down um, each side of the arm. And of course then when you come to sort of tidy up that side with a piece of card it's not sticking right down because the wadding is too high so that was one of the little errors that I've corrected this time around well I corrected it that time around I had to sort of take off the fabric and cut the wadding back and then replace the fabric okay so that's that bit now we'll do the back one first so just put it next to your sofa and Remind yourself which is the back of the arm. And then bring in just the folded piece of fabric. So this is the piece without the bunker in. And then apply glue to one edge. Okay, 
so that's the back. So let me come round that way. Take the piece of fabric, and this is where you can't help but getting glue on your fingers. And we're going to cover the edge of the wadding, and this is going right up to the edge of the arm there. So pull it down on that side. And this is quite tricky, this bit. Pull it around nice and tightly, get it into that little dip. I want a better word. Like that. Look how that's neatening it off. Now I'm actually just going to put my thumbnail in that little dip and then pull this bit around because I don't want that to come out. I want that to stay nice and sharp. That shape in there. And then bring this bit around. If it takes you a while to get it into position and you've been touching it like I have with your fingers and wiping off the glue, you might just need to put a little bit more glue on. Pull that nice and tight. I'm going to keep pressing and hoping I haven't got to apply more glue. And this is the bit that I didn't do on my practice run. see I've got a bit of gap in at the edge there and that's just because the fabric that we then put on next wasn't sticking um, over the wadding. Um, as I'm looking at that I'm thinking should I redo it? No because I have to take the whole thing apart but like I say this is the hidden arm at the back and at the other side of the doll's house so I'm not too worried but I just wish I'd have thought of this the first time round. Sometimes you have to take things apart and redo them, you can't get away with it, but on that I'm going to leave it because it would be such hard work again to... I'd have to start basically from the beginning. Trim those off to the bottom of the side piece. Any excess fabric, just tuck that under. And we're now going to do the same at the front edge, but with our covered bunker. So we'll apply glue. I kind of need some more glue actually. I do seem to be using a lot of glue for this. Apply glue again along that edge and right up to the edge as well, along the top edge of the piece of bunker. And that's why it's good to do the back back bit of first as well, because it gives you a practice <laughs> for the front edge that needs to be even neater. same thing again. Top edge in. I'm just trying to rub the glue from my fingers. I'm going to do that straight side first. You want to get it right along the front edge of the arm. and tight. Just check that there's no um, wadding sticking out as well as you're going round. You could have a spare cocktail stick handy and if any's poking out you can just poke it back in. Into the little dip again. Just trying to edge that forward a little bit. Keeping my thumbnail in there while I straighten that bottom edge. Press it all down. Make sure there's no gap in around the curve. I've got a little bit more glue coming out this time, but I think it's okay. And this this glue does dry clear as well, actually, this wood glue. That's why it's quite good for fabric.
and then again trim away the overhanging bits at the bottom level with the bottom of the arm Now we're going to cut a piece of fabric that we're going to use to put over the whole of the arm now. And we're going to use Wonderweb to bind the edges rather than gluing them. Now the Wonderweb that I've got is 25 millimetres thick, one inch thick. So you need to cut the piece of fabric as wide as the arm, just sort of behind the little bunker ridge behind the little crease there and then add on double the thickness of your webbing. Now we call this wonder web in the UK I'm not sure what it's called um, in other countries but it's just this thing that you use for hemming. I'm not really good on um, haberdashery terminology but I'm sure just by seeing this you'll know know what it is but you can buy it thinner as well so just add on double the thickness of that and we'll hem that in and then you want it to be long enough to go around the arm like that so that's how you want to cut it now I'm quite lucky that I'm using this plain fabric but if you were using um, a pattern you also need to think about getting your stripes or your pattern lined up which is going to make it a lot harder and you'll need a lot more fabric so if this is your first go, you might just want to consider um, using a plain fabric. Okay, so cut a couple of pieces of Wonder Web. And then you want to fold those in to either side. I'm going to go and iron these in and then we get a lovely sharp edge there. So fold it in like that. And you can't actually iron the wonder web. You've got to iron the fabric otherwise it'll just stick to the bottom of your iron. And see what a lovely sharp edge that gives you when you use the Wonder Web and iron that in. So we're now going to attach this piece. So I've got my glue here. I'm going to start along the front edge. So just begin by applying glue to the fabric there and just behind the bunker. And do your best not to get it onto that ridge, onto the bunker and I'm just applying it around the rounded part of the arm to start with. And I'm just going to pick off those bits that I've got onto the wad in there. If I can snip them off it'll be easier. Remember I said to you that they dry and crispy and hard. Okay, so bring in your piece of fabric and so that it's sort of sitting centrally above that arm we're going to attach it just behind the bunker and we want to push it right up behind it and we're really going to try and press it in and hide it as well as we can. So feed it round like that quite tightly you can get it into position and then use your thumbnail to sort of push it into place well I can't because I've my thumbnail completely broke off yesterday 
while I was sanding. Just pull that bit straight and again really push it into that little corner there. And just try and flatten it as much as you can. And then we'll do the other end, so just sort of pull back the fabric a little bit without undoing what you've just done. And again, we'll just go in to apply it around the round part of the arm. Same thing again going to feed that around just behind the little ridge there on the fabric. Okay, pull it nice and tightly. You may need to stretch it a little bit. If you do that, make sure you're not pulling it off of the front edge. Pushing it back into that corner at the front edge. Okay, we're then going to apply a bit of glue under this flap on the back. Again, try to avoid getting it onto the wadding if you can. so it's straight all the way along and still sitting behind that little ridge. And press that down. And I've stretched it a little bit in the middle there so I'm just sort of trying to press that down without it causing a crease. Just snip a little triangle out of there. These are the wrong scissors, they're completely blunt. I don't know why I've still got them any. And then pull those together. Okay, and I'm going to trim a little bit more from this side because we're going to be covering a piece of card for this side which is our outer edge so which will be the visible side and gluing that down on the outside just to really neaten it off so just trim a little bit off and then we're going to cut diagonally along that corner up into that little sort of nook. So don't go right into the nook because that will be visible but just trim that off and we're just sort of trying to make it so there's less fabric to have to cover with the card and on that side as well. And then again we'll apply a bit of glue under there and stick that down. Going to trim off a bit of that wadding and then stick that down so you're pressing it right in under the arm and what I used on the other one to help me was a spare piece of strip wood so pop that down on your work surface make sure you've got a clean area and then push the bit of strip wood in underneath that rounded arm and so that you're really pushing the fabric up to the crease there. Push that fabric down as well. I'm just trying to straighten out those little creases there. Pressing in those little corners again. 
we were still a little bit tacky so you've still got time to neaten anything up if you need to some wadding coming out of the front there as well I'm just going to snip that off when you're doing that just be very careful of your fabric okay so we'll leave that to dry for a moment so now cut a piece of card that fits along there so level with the bottom and sit just on the inside of the bunker and the little hem at the other end and then apply double sided tape to one side and then cut a piece of fabric so you've got a border at each side and along the top and then a larger piece hanging down at the bottom and that's just the bit that we're going to fold actually underneath the sofa so put the card face down on the wrong side of your fabric remove the double sided tape back in I'm just checking that the picture is clear in there because I've had to draw the curtains in front of me because the sun is so bright but I've got another window at the side so hopefully it's bright enough okay, so pop that down there and then bring the top over stick that down and then you can come in with your scissors just trim away that little square at each corner like that and then fold in your sides first of all make in a little triangle at the corner like that and then apply a little bit of glue to each end of the fabric there actually it's probably easier if you snip away that corner just don't go too close to the actual corner of the card I don't want any of the card to be poking through up there so fold that in tuck in any of the little frayed pieces of fabric at the corner as well and we'll tuck those in when we come to fit the piece as well fold over the other side and then just apply a little bit of glue under those flaps that are left and we're going to glue those down as well and we'll be cutting off some of this material at the bottom and then apply glue to the back of the card and even you can even apply the glue over the double sided tape so we only needed that for sticking down the fabric it's not actually to attach it to the side of the sofa because that won't be strong enough so applying the glue get right up to the edges of the card along those sides as well and just go as far down as your piece of card I'm just going to cover that glue up and then we're going to attach this and to underneath the rounded part of the arm that's our inside remember so it's this side you want to attach it to and you want to again push it right up to the line under the curve and so it's sitting just behind the bunker there at the front and really push that corner in have a cocktail stick handy as well Let me just get that edge straight and if you've got any of that little corner that we cut away sticking out poke that in poke it right in like that and then press it down making sure you've got a nice straight edge along there still not happy with that that's why I don't really like snipping away a triangle at the corners because 
you can either see the card or you get that little frayed bit. So once you've tidied it up, then really push it down. I'm concentrating on the front edge first. And then move along to the back. Press that down as well. And I'm going to bring that piece of dowel back in and press that along the top of the piece of card to really push it down against the wood. Then hold on to that and you can trim away some of this fabric at the bottom. And you just sort of want to come just inside the bottom piece there. Just go along there like that. Make sure it's not going to be overhanging the arm, and if it is, you can just snip a little bit away. And then apply glue actually along the bottom of the arm, so along the wood there. And then fold that over. Pull it nice and tight, you've got that lovely neat edge along the bottom there. Again, I'm trying not to touch the other fabric with my gluey fingers. And that can then be left to dry. And don't stand it up like that because that glue under there will still be wet. It might stick to your surface. And that's that arm done. So we can now move on to the front edge of the sofa base. Okay, so begin by applying a line of double-sided tape along the front edge of the base. Line up a side and a bottom edge and then you've just got to trim off along the top there. Okay, and then lay that down and you can use your craft knife to trim away the excess. It's easier to get rid of the sticky on the half nice knife because you can just change the blade like that and then remove the back in I'm going to apply a line of wadding along there so lay that along there like that and then you can trim away the excess I'm now going to apply a line of double-sided tape along the top and bottom of the piece along that front edge. That off. Same on the other side. And then have a piece of fabric that's as long as the front plus probably about an inch 25 mil on either side and a bit to fold over at the front top and bottom as well like that and then remove the back in on one side actually we can remove it on both sides sort of do it at the same time like that and then Lay the piece of fabric evenly across the front and then we're going to press down at the top and bottom. Don't pull it too tight, so we don't want the front to be lumpy in any way. So pull it over, make sure it's even all the way along. Bring in your scissors again. I'm going to cut along the fabric up into the up into the corner of the base, like that. 
And you don't go right close to the corner, you want to probably be you know, about a millimetre away. So just feel that with the tip of your scissors and then move them back a little bit. Keep that central flap, then we're going to trim these off to sort of half the thickness of the base. Pull that flap up and then you can apply a little bit of glue actually onto the wood. Fold in those sides. That one as well. And then you can fold down that flap. Again, don't pull it too tightly, we don't want to distort the fabric at the front, but you still want a nice neat edge. Like that, and the same at the other side. That's our front edge. The sides of that will be covered with the side pieces there. That keeps that looking nice and neat. Before we fix all these pieces together we need to make a cut out in the back piece to allow for the arms and then this piece slots right up against the back of the base like that and between the arms. So we need to cut out this little section at each side so that that will then slot over the top of the arm. So begin by making a little pencil mark in the centre at the back of the base. Like that. And then do a pencil line down the centre of the back piece. Same at the other side. that up and then bring in the base and line up your pencil marks and bring in one of the arms like that and we're just going to draw around the arm but without getting the pencil onto the fabric I'm probably doing this the wrong way around let me see if I can hold it all together and then just do a pencil line on the inside edge of the arm. Like that. And then the same at the other side. So keep the pencil lines lined up like that. Sit that one there. And again, draw around the edge of the arm. Sorry if I'm blocking you there, but I can't get to it like that. So we've now got our rough shapes there. So I want to continue the line, the straight sort of edge, down to the bottom of the piece. So draw a line up there, up to where it begins to curve. And the same on the other side. Like that. We're then going to cut that out. So I've just put a new blade into my knife. And we're going to begin just by scoring the curved line into the wood. So just cut round the curve like that, just with the tip of the knife. 
sort of cut through like that and then you can take out a little section. So work until the knife's all the way through the wood and then go back to the curve and sort of chip that out. And it's always harder shaping a thicker piece of wood. Another little section and then back into the curve. Just get in there with the very tip and snip it out like that. And then when you get to the straight edge you can just cut that normally using your rule. I've got a little bit more of a curve there. Then come down the straight edge like that. So light score to start. Cut at the edge of the wood like that. And then cut through. Careful of your fingers. Just go back in and get that little curved section. Just going to tidy up that inside edge. that to do that at the other side of the wood as well and then you can just tidy up those edges with a piece of sandpaper we're now going to cover the back piece so this piece where we've drawn our line will be the inside edge and that will be covered with the back cushions so we're not going to cover this side completely, we're just going to wrap the fabric around so we've got a nice neat back. So begin by applying glue down the sides and we're going to sort the fabric around that curve first. And then pull that in, get a nice neat finish around the curve so don't worry about the top or bottom bit yet, sort of pull it in there, stick it down and then you can pull it in at the top, making a little pleat and then stretch it in along the bottom like that. I'm going to do the same at the other side. Pull it in at the curve first, take it down, make a little pleat at the top there, and then pull that in. And all of this inside edge will actually be hidden from view. We just want it to look neat for the sake of the sides and that back piece. Pull that all in like that. And then along the top here we can snip our corners again. And you can actually snip that piece away. Same at the other side. And then we can I'm going to glue this piece in this time rather than snip it away. So apply a bit of glue along the edge of the fabric. And then make a little triangle corner. And the same at this side. I'm just going to move it up there and do it because I'm getting glue on the bit that I'm working on. Fold that in as well and I'm sort of pressing it against the top of the back piece as well as I do that. And then apply glue along the top edge of the wood.
and then glue that piece over. And then we can do the same along the bottom here. Snip the little corner away. and then apply glue along the top edge. So it's a little bit of a sort of crease, a little bit of lifted fabric at those cutouts, but when we glue the back piece into place and put the arms in we can pull that forward and that will hold that in. We're now going to attach the back piece to the base so apply glue along the back edge of the base put that down on your surface and then pull the back against it so that the lines are lining up that and they both want to be flat against the surface. So press that into place. Squeeze those together and then just check along the bottom that you've got a nice flush edge along the back there. I'm just going to hold that into place until the glue begins to take. So I've got a couple of pieces of kitchen towel here. And we're just going to fold like that and just place one along the front and one along the back. And I'm just going to secure this with a couple of ratchet clamps, but I didn't want to touch the clamps against the fabric. one at either side like that, one along that front edge as well, and then pull them in like that. So make sure the clamps are sitting centrally on the base part. That and then you can tighten it up and then do that same thing at the other end. Make sure the back is still sitting flush along the bottom there. Oops. Quite tricky with only one pair of hands. Going along the base part. and then tighten it up. And I'm not going too tight. I just want that to hold that until the glue begins to take. And I don't want it to dent the um, wadding along the front edge. So I won't leave that for too long. We're about 10 minutes or so, and then we can attach the arms. We're now going to attach the side pieces. And we're just going to apply glue along the side of the base. And I'm actually going to apply glue at each side and then attach them together. Okay, just pop that back down. And then bring in the first side piece. And it should be flush along the front 
and not so much with the fabric but with the front edge. So if you look from underneath, make sure that the actual wood is lined up. And you also want a flush edge along that bottom. Now because of the fabric, if you just let that sit normally, it's going out at an angle. So you need to make sure that that's pushed up so that this inside edge here is straight. Push that in like that. I'm going to attach that other one as well. So again, look from underneath. That needs to come down a little bit. And you want to have that line along the bottom edge, so you want a nice flat bottom edge showing from the front there. And I'm pressing that all together, so I keep squeezing together. Now the ratchet clamps that I just used only have a five inch opening and I haven't got any larger ones at the moment. Well, I am going to order some in. I'll get some for the Etsy shop as well because they'll be really handy for projects like this. What I'm actually going to do is, I've got a couple of pieces of wood here, I'm just going to stand those one at either side, a couple of longer pieces here too to protect the fabric at the front and back. So I'm basically building a frame around that I'm going to stick the tape around just to protect the fabric. But of course if you've got those um, wider clamps then use those. It's got a really long piece here so that I can stick it around the side like that. Pulling that side piece in, around the back edge, and onto this other side. Like that. Nice and tight, so it's pulling it all together. The same around here as well. from underneath make sure again that you've got that flat edge and you can still push it down if you need to and then turn it onto the back like that I'm actually going to put a bit or a couple of pieces underneath as well Just pushing that left hand arm in so that it straightens up as the glue begins to set and then I'll leave this section to dry. Mm -hmm. 